Oh, and here we are for a completely off the cuff car review that I wasn't expected to do or expecting to do and so therefore absolutely no preparation at all. You're just going to hear what I think of this car and whether I like driving it basically. My preference for car reviews is going to be old, British and interesting. And as you can see, none of those boxes are being ticked right now. But as I also said in a video from just the other day, that I want to drive everything, everything. Yes, yes, so this Subaru Forester is included in that unticked box. The box that wasn't an option in the first place. Well, it was an option, but only I know about it. That means that some people may feel a bit upset seeing a Japanese car like this with a diesel engine in my yard for a review but I want to have a go in it and it's still me it's still my video you're still going to see a load of nonsense from a man who knows nothing about this car what I know about this car is it's a Subaru and there's a two and a half litre diesel engine a boxer engine from what I remember the boxer engine is a good sturdy engine but it's a bit low on low down power it doesn't have quite the torque band that you expect from a diesel but obviously i can make my own mind up about that quite soon but what of the styling of this rather boxy car it does lack anything completely unique it looks almost a bit like a mercedes yeah one of those mercedes off-roaders and it also looks a bit like it wants to be a Land Rover Freelander or even a Chrysler. You could say this car has no real style of its own. You could say that, but I'm not going to because I don't want to get into some trouble off of those people over there. I might go as far as to admit that I actually quite like this bonnet scoop there. It's rather inviting for insects and small birdies. <laughs> The big grill has a kind of American look about it somehow, but then the Japanese like to do that kind of thing as well, so maybe it's a Japanese look about it. Might be worthwhile saying that I think this is a rather nice shade of grey. We have too many grey cars these days, but it doesn't mean you can't have a nice shade of grey, and I think this one is quite nice. And then we have 17 inch alloy wheels in black. Black is the wrong colour for alloys but at least they're not 19 or 20 inch. Twin tailpipes on the rear suggests that there might be some big power going on. These roof rails look rather dapper and rather purposeful and probably, yeah, quite sturdy actually. Some cars have roof rails on that you're told not to use because they're just for, you know, looking at. I wonder what that could be then. These doors look like they're going to be really heavy, but no, it's actually quite light. And the shut sound, you can't tell because the glass is up. What about the rear? That's locked. I can't even open that. By unlocking the doors, it has been made possible to open the door. So what's this one like? Very light again, actually. Quite a nice sound, that one, actually. To me, this is the kind of car that you buy for the passengers rather than yourself. I mean, it might not be, I might be proven completely wrong with that, but by the looks of it, it is for, uh, well, like I just said, passengers. And that means the first place I want to sit inside is going to be the back, because that's probably more important. And it does appear to have quite a lot of space. Yes. Do you know what? If I was going on a long journey somewhere, I think I could be very comfortable in here because I've got plenty of leg room, plenty of knee room, which is useful, and also room for my bumps as well. But what if I want to be a bit more relaxed? Well, there we go. The seat reclines as well. That does mean that you slide forward ever so slightly, but it's good for when you're feeling lazy. I think we've easily got room for three in the back of here. 
three reclining seats, although it's two reclining seats. So if you're sat there and you want to recline and the person sat there doesn't want to recline, they're going to have to recline because you've got the button. In order for the rear seats to have so much room, I think it's a bit more compromised in the front there because I haven't got as much leg room as I normally would like. But I like to stretch out like a lazy cat or a, or a dog um, or any kind of animal that basically stretches itself out and looks really lazy. That's me. So you can have a person there and a person there and a person there and a person there and then you need somebody to sit there to operate the controls to drive the car. And that is what I will be doing quite soon. But what about the other person or the other thing? So what kind of person would you keep in the back? Well, normally it would be a dog or, you know, some shopping. Admittedly, uh, shopping isn't people. Yeah, so basically there's probably room in here for your dog. Hello there. Or your gangster, whichever you prefer to carry around with you. Well, over Farn in the boot, it's a young chap who owns a car called Project Ronnie. And you'll be seeing Project Ronnie soon. As it goes, that's got nothing to do with this video, so I'll shut up now. Fair enough. So, as you can see, the boot is big enough for a person. But is it big enough for a proper man? I mean, a man needs to be about six foot tall. He needs to have a, a belly that shows he likes his food and beer. And uh, about a hundred kilos. So. I reckon I can almost fit in here. Bye, Paul. I don't, I'm not sure that uh, being in the boots is the way I would personally like to travel, but it does make a nice seat for a picnic. If I was having a picnic, this is where I would sit rather than inside the car. So there we go. That's its purpose. And look at that, that's quite tall. So I very nearly didn't bang my head on that. Thank you. Before I go into the engine compartment, let's have a look at the interior. The interior and its quality. Whenever I get into a new car, I've got this habit of tapping the plastics to see what it's like. I don't know why, because once you've done that, you never do it again. You know, tapping the dashboard isn't part of actually driving it. But you want to hear how solid it feels, how good the materials are. And on this, it's it's okay and then we have a look at the door card which um, looks all quite nice quite firm but I can see why it's light it's not the strongest material but then again as I have just said who built a car to impress someone like me who built a Rover that's who that's why I like Rovers because the because the door cards feel good yeah that's it the rest of this in here does it does just feel kind of let me say generic modern carish. It doesn't feel anything amazingly different. Everything's in the right place. All these wheels and buttons have exactly the same kind of feel that most of the modern cars do. You've got buttons on the steering wheel, which you have to figure out what you're doing before you drive, unless you don't mess with them. And we have the starter button, which um, I didn't have to ask how this works. Just put my foot on the clutch and it worked like that and showed off all of the various uh, controls on the dashboard. No DVD. I don't want to watch a DVD while I'm driving anyway. Off. Now, the next game is to find out where the bonnet release is because I can't see it. Uh, well, it was exactly where I expected it to be. That's disappointing. I thought I was going to be hunting around for that for ages. There we go. There's the bonnet open. And we can see the engine sat quite low down. That may be because the car's tall or because it's a flat four. And uh, it just sits lower down. So lower centre of gravity. We also have this strut brace across there. That looks like an aftermarket thing. And I'm probably going to get told that it was, you know factory but they wanted to make it look aftermarket see that bonnet scoop actually has a purpose it scoops the air in to there you see you get cold air to feed the turbo but what kind of power does a car like this have and how much power does it actually need to have i reckon probably about 
182 horsepower. But when I drive it, I'll tell you if that's correct. I think it's probably time to take this car for a little drive. Well, it's typically easy to drive like any modern car and it feels very much a bit like the Land Rover Freelander on by Senior Mustard. Steering's nice and light. Um, yep, the steering's nice and light and the car wafts along very, very easily. Oh, what are you doing, you stupid boy? The engine's quiet. And so you just give it a little bit of a hoof. Then what happens? Good, quite uh, punchy. I'm having to close the window again, but it's very hot in here because I haven't figured out the aircon. So, how well does it uh, go on the bends? Well, it's quite, yeah, it's got quite a bit of lean to it. I think if I was to push it hard, it, uh, it'd be leaning all over the place, but then you put your foot down and it just goes. Well, that's very impressive, actually. And it's not particularly loud either. In fact, I would say it's uh, quiet. Brakes need quite a shove to get them to work. Uh, they should do. Everything's overly assisted these days, isn't it? Very much a third gear car. There's third gear there, pull down. Quite a nice, healthy punch to it. And not a lot of noise from that rather muted boxer engine. I was expecting a lot more aggression than that but it's, it's, it's really rather civilized actually it's definitely quick enough nice and responsive yeah. i like it oh it's got six gear as well there gear number six for when you're on the motorway not the motorway the motorway what about this massive sunroof? Oh, that is big. That's letting in loads of light. My word, that's an impressive sunroof. What I don't know here is whether this car is a four wheel drive or not. I simply don't know what I'm doing. And then why should I? It's not the kind of car that I look at normally. It's just that if it's brought to me to have a drive off, that's exactly what I will do. I'm not massively fussy. As an everyday car, this job does that perfectly well. No, this car does that job perfectly well. It's quite a quite a good car. It's quite pleasant, easy to live with. It's not it's not boring either. It's um, a couple of cars I've been in of this kind of age have been just really dull. I mean this one is not particularly exciting but it's not dull. But I will say I much prefer your MGF. Yes I do. <laughs>